That's what it comes down to. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, he is one of, uh, well, he was just, I, I believe he was voted as one of America's most eligible bachelors. Uh, he is one of the most successful entrepreneurs in North America. You all right over there? Go back to Hall. We'll be joining us after this. Tomorrow on Urban Rush from Twilight's New Moon, actor Christopher Heyerdahl. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Well, our next guest was just voted one of the top bachelors most eligible in the world. Uh, so ladies, I think I have your attention, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> successful, smart, and... Uh, if I don't mind saying, he's not hard on the eyes either. <laughs> Gerbach Shahal is joining us uh, to talk about all kinds of stuff. Gee, is it, is it a little weird being voted as one of the most eligible bachelors? Yeah, it's flattering. It's flattering. Very yeah. flattering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think girls look at the list and they're like, hmm, I'm going to meet him as you go? I don't know. I didn't look at the list. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't asked them that. Do you have parents trying to, do your parents try and set you up with, with no, girls? No, I, I think they just gave up on it. They, just, they basically <laughs> said, you know what, whatever makes you happy, whenever it happens, we support it. So they don't have a plan of, you got to get married at this age. I or think anything they're like pretty that. proud of you, though. I think they, they probably came to terms that you're doing okay a yeah. while back. Now, yeah. how old were you when you started? Did your first business? I was 16. 16. And yeah. uh, what did your parents think when you started making money? Uh, they didn't really think anything. So I was basically going to school class and then basically within those first three months, uh, you know, made $100,000, had it in the bank. And uh, it was really at that point, uh, once I sat down with them, explained it in English what I was doing. Uh, uh, you know, they allowed me to drop out, and I was able to focus in on it for two years. What was it that uh, that sparked your idea in the first place? I mean, because I think about when I was 16, and and yeah, I, I thought I had some <laughs> things that I really wanted to do, but but that follow through was never yeah. really at 16. Well, you know, what I was good at. So yeah. what was it that well, kept you going? Well, I guess uh, since I matured a lot quicker, I was the odd one. You know, growing up, wore a turban, uh, went through a lot of uh, you know hardships that way, but. Uh, my family was also struggling, so there was an opportunity for all of us to kind of pitch in, and uh, I didn't really know what to do. I mean, so yeah. you know, how my, much do you think that struggle sort of forges uh, success? You know, having having to fight through those things and, yeah. and continue. I think the struggle teaches you how to be ambitious because you realize you have to defy the odds if you want to win. Yeah. And uh, my my only job interview that I've ever done when I was first going through that process was McDonald's and since they rejected me I realized alright they right. rejected you? I was like alright I, I gotta be CEO now so they're you get the last laugh my jumped, friend how old were you with the McDonald's? 16 so it was either McDonald's or Click Agents and I think I picked the right one well success is the best revenge what was your first business anyway? Click Agents uh, all, online advertising so yeah. uh, all my three companies have been around the advertising space so now I you just had order. a meeting this afternoon. You've just started uh, a brand new venture called G Wallet. Yeah. Uh, explain what this one's all about. So you know the bar is pretty high for me uh, in terms of what I want to do next. My first company I sold it for forty million at eighteen. Second sold, company. Second company I sold for three hundred million at twenty five, <laughs> and I'm twenty seven, and I started my my third one. And uh, three months late into it, uh, we just signed a twelve and a half million dollar uh, round of financing from blue chip investors. Adam Street Partners, Trinity Ventures, you know, companies they invested in are like Starbucks. Yeah. So, uh, even Stanford University. So, you know, pretty good pedigree going on. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, and and you know, I, I've sort of, I've always been interested in the careers of, you know, the Warren Buffetts, the Charlie Mungers, and stuff like that. And one of the interesting things that that they talked about once was was repeating success. That that can be one of the most difficult challenges for people is is having that initial success, moving on to that, having the next, and then mm -hmm. the next after that. So, what do you look for? Uh, you know, d is it a feeling that you have when you're starting something? Well, you know, a lot of it is you you start with an open playing field. You adapt to change. You're open to change, uh, and and you go with it. And a lot of it is gut. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of that inner feeling inside you when it tells you right and wrong, it's probably right. So. How do you know when to trust it? Because you hear about that <laughs> yeah. all the time, trusting yeah. your instincts when it comes to making big decisions Anytime you like have to that. think about it for more than a certain amount of time, you're talking yourself out of it. So Excellent just stick to advice. that first gut. And I still now, of course, you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars that you've made over, over the years of your uh, 27 years. Uh, money often changes people and makes people act a little kooky. How have you managed to stay grounded? 
Well, besides my family and very close friends, uh, you know, I still like keep things real. I mean, I, I fly economy. I, you know, I'm pretty, uh, it's not because I'm cheap. I just, you know, I'd rather spend my money elsewhere in terms of that direction. So uh, I'm very charitable. I'm involved in a lot of charities. And, uh, uh, you know, all, all that puts things in perspective. So it's mm -hmm. not really about, like, uh, the headlines, as you read, of, of the, the millions that are created. It's really holding on to them and realizing them, you know, what else is out there besides the monetary stuff. That well, do you I, notice that people treat you differently when they find out about <laughs> who you are and how much money that you're actually worth? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it comes with the territory, but it's, it, it really comes down to, you know, knowing it yeah. and uh, at least processing whatever you want to come out of it after that. Yeah, how, how important has your family been? I mean, especially your parents, because, you know, I, I look at families that make the decision to uproot their life, move somewhere else for a better opportunity, not just for themselves, but for their kids as well. And, and what a what a bold and brave move that can be for for family. So how important have your parents been in in sort of guiding you through and, and helping well, you out? I, I think they've given. Uh, I mean, obviously at 16, I didn't have that much freedom. I have a lot more freedom now as a 27 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents still crack the whip when you were? You know, you were very. They were very strict. Even so when you were making all in those 11 years, I think we've progressed a lot yeah. in terms of the freedom territory, but. Uh, uh, nevertheless, I mean, we're still a very tight-knit family, so yeah. we support each other through thick and thin, and uh, I think that's probably one of the you know, key reasons of my success, so I can always lean on them, count on them through my ups and downs. What yeah. did they think when you wanted to drop out of high school? Uh, yeah, I had that Because I tried that, yeah. I wasn't yeah. allowed. Yeah. Well, I think my mom, uh, probably even after I sold my second company at 25, she was just like, you still need to go back to school, you know, just because your education is always there with you, and I'm like... That's 25. Such a mom. <laughs> like, so, so the only success. So your mom wants you to go back yeah, and get your. Actually, the only success she's probably ever proud of right now is that I got a phone call two weeks ago from one of the universities I teach at, uh, at or volunteer to teach at, and it's Pace University, a prominent university in New York, yeah. and uh, they just announced that they're going to give me my honorary doctorate degree. So is this okay so, with mom instead of so, a high school so diploma? I told my mom I became a doctor one way or another, right? So be happy <laughs> so now. So how much That's is cute. that is that idea? Because of course you're speaking here in the city uh, to uh, a group of people, whether they're business leaders or or whether they're students. How important is it for you to get in front of people sometimes and and just sort of you know try and motivate people and, and pass along some of the experiences you've had? Well, I think there's a, different ways I can help. Obviously, you know, philanthropy is great, getting involved non-monetary and monetary in that area. But at the same time, if you can help change people's lives, I mean, people have read my book mm -hmm. and they've been inspired yeah. by it. So that basically tells me that's kind of my way of slowly giving back yeah. and slowly kind of building my legacy that way. So if I can help kids kind of morph their lives in a positive direction, I mean, that's yeah. just well, more and, of the best. Well, and young people are going to gravitate towards G-Wallet, I think, a little bit. And maybe tell us a little bit about that, because this is another brilliant idea. Well, it's, it's just a way, I mean, if you have Facebook, uh, you play games on Facebook. I'm sure you heard of Farmville. 100 million people play it I have friends Facebook. that get up in the middle of the night to, to uh, yeah. water their lawns yeah. or whatever yeah. they're up yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously it's infectious in the way that how many people are involved in it. But in order for you to do certain things in these virtual environments, you have to go ahead and buy currency. Right. So G Wallet actually makes these games money because we allow people to buy currency either through cash or through advertising. Unbelievable. And then can they do something with that currency? Yeah, they can water their lawn. They, <laughs> can, <laughs> <laughs> they can do a lot of virtual feed digital their stuff. Cattle, <laughs> yeah, they can they feed do. their baby, whatever yeah. they want. We virtually. live in an amazing world right now. It is changing so fast. Oh, it's yeah. got to be, I yeah. mean, you must see from your perspective just the opportunity involved in that must be. Oh, yeah, it's already a multi billion dollar industry. So, uh, a small piece of that would be just fine. Man, Marvelous. I wish I were smarter. <laughs> uh, if you want to go uh, and check it out, first of all, uh, The Dream is out. How I Learned uh, the Risks and Rewards of Entrepreneurship and Made Millions is out right now if you want to check it out. And she is speaking tonight at the Surrey Performing Arts Center, uh, December 1st, of course, today at 7 p.m. If you have an opportunity to go, I'm sure tickets will be at a premium right now, but try and get in there and uh, listen to what I'm sure will be a very inspirational evening. So. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Real pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank it was you. awesome. We're going to take a quick break. Were that... we better than Oprah? I mean, honestly. Uh, funner. <laughs> take that back. Yes. That's all I five. Good night. All right. We're going to take a quick Less break. Intense. Less intense. Less <laughs> intense than Oprah. Well, I knew that. Uh, Ken Costick is going to be joining us right after the break for some quick meals under $10. Don't go away.